Let us consider how to plan a lesson in which the goal is for learners to be able to solve linear equations of this type. So for example, 4x plus 3 is equal to 2x plus 9. Now currently the lesson may begin with the teacher showing the learners a method for solving the equation. And if time is tight, then a trick may be employed to solve the equation. Here, a trick would be that every time a term is jumped from one side of the equation to the other, then the sign of the term changes. This is commonly referred to as change sides, change sign. So here, starting a new equation, I may want to keep the 4x on the left hand side, jump the 2x from the right to the left, so that its sign changes and it becomes negative 2x. Keep the 9 on the right hand side and jump the plus 3 to be negative 3 on the right hand side. I can then collect some like terms. 4x take away 2x is 2x. 9 take away 3 is 6. And if 2x is equal to 6, then x will be equal to 3. And then the solution to this equation is 3. I may then want to have the learners complete a set of exercises, uh, similar to the one shown here, before ending the lesson perhaps by doing some marking. Now let us now consider what should happen in the new curriculum when I'm planning the same lesson through the five mathematical proficiencies. Now these are shown here on the bottom of the screen going from left to right, but it should be emphasised that there isn't any particular order here uh, these proficiencies should be seen as being intertwined and interlinked. So let's go back to the drawing board and think of a lesson for solving the same linear equation. Starting with conceptual understanding, what would I want learners to understand about the concepts in this question? Well, there is an important concept here, the concept of a mathematical variable. This letter x here is actually a mathematical variable. And perhaps before coming to the lesson in which we are solving these linear equations, I would want the learners to understand that sometimes a mathematical variable can represent any or a general number, but sometimes, as in this equation, a mathematical variable represents ultimately a single number. Moving on to communication with symbols, I've already talked about the important symbol x here, a mathematical variable. We also have an important symbol in the middle of the equation. Now this is sometimes incorrectly referred to as the makes symbol, and we hear that 4x plus 3 makes 2x plus 9. This is always the equal symbol. The left hand side of the equation should be viewed as being equal to the right hand side. And actually, there is some Welsh context here. It was a Welshman, Robert Record, in 1557, who was the first person to use this particular symbol as the equal sign. And communication with symbols isn't just about the actual symbols in the equation, but how we communicate with them. So, above, when I wrote down 3 as the solution to the, of the equation, I was incorrect in doing so. Because when we are solving an equation, we are finding a value of the variable. So here, I should have wrote down that the variable x is equal to 3. This is the correct solution of the equation. Moving on to strategic competence. Now, yes, I would want the learners to have a strategy for solving this equation. And I wouldn't want them to rely on tricks like the one showed at the beginning of the video. I would want them to have a better method uh, which would give them a deeper conceptual understanding of what is going on. Now here is one method. I'm not stating that this is the best, best method or even the only method uh, of solving an equation. But we can visualise this equation on a set of balance scales. And I can use some manipulatives, some algebra tiles to show what is going on. Now let the variable x here be represented by one of these green rods. On the left hand side of the equation I have 4x, so on the left hand side of this balance scale I will place 4 of these green rods. Now also on the left hand side of the equation I have 3 units, so I will use this yellow a square algebra tile to represent a single unit, so I will require 3 of them uh, in the left hand side of the scales here. 
Now on the right hand side we have 2x, so I need to place two green rods uh, in the right hand side of the scales, and also nine units, so I'll try and fit in nine of these square tiles into the right hand side of the scales. So this would be one way of visualising the equation. And then to try to solve the equation, we could think about what we could change about this set of scales um, whilst keeping things balanced. Now, if I take something out of each side, let's say I take a green rod here, an X out to the right-hand side, then to keep things balanced, I must do the same to the other side. So I must take a green rod, an X out to the left-hand side. And we can see I can do that again. I can take an X out of both sides of the equation. Uh, and then we have an equation which is more simple. What's left in the scales, and therefore what I can write down as the equation, on the right-hand side I have two green rods, so that's 2x. There's also three of these units that are still in the left-hand side, so that's 2x plus 3. On the right-hand side I just have nine units uh, in the right-hand side of the scale. Then, what else could I take out from both sides while still keeping things balanced? Well, I could take out three of these counters from the left-hand side, and therefore, to keep things balanced, I must take out three from the right-hand side as well. Then, what is left, and what I can write down as an equation, is on the left-hand side, 2x, two green bars, and on the right-hand side, I have six units left. And then, by doing some manipulation, some rearrangements such as this, then hopefully we can see that a green bar, therefore the x variable, is equal to 3 units. And so the solution to this equation is x is equal to 3 as before. So hopefully a method like this will lead to greater conceptual understanding and less reliance on tricks which are easily forgotten. It should also be argued that I've used logical reasoning here uh, from going from one line of the solution to the next. I have, I have had to reason out what happens in terms of the scale, uh, in terms of taking things out and keeping things balanced. The one proficiency I haven't talked about is fluency. Now yes, fluency is about doing things accurately. Um, yes, I would want my learners to still to be able to perform a set of exercises of this type. But it shouldn't be about uh, completing the exercises in the fastest time. It should be about accuracy, and it should also be about checking the solution. So here, uh, I've reached the stage where I think that x is equal to 3, but how can I check this solution? Well, if we think that x is equal to 3, we could substitute this value back into the left-hand side and the right hand side of the original equation and see if we have or obtain the same number. So if x is equal to 3, then 4x plus 3, the left hand side of the equation, will be 4 multiplied by 3 and add another 3, which is 12 and 3, which is 15. And if x is still equal to 3, then the right hand side of the original equation, the 2x plus 9, will be equal to 2 multiplied by 3, and then add on 9, which will be 6 and 9, which is also 15. Because I've had the same number twice, then I have verified that this is a valid solution. So hopefully, during this video, I've shown some uh, different ways of thinking about solving the linear equation 4x plus 3 is equal to 2x plus 9, and to think about some of the uh, avenues that we could explore in the new curriculum through the five new mathematical proficiencies.